right everyone welcome back to champions of the fog we are loading in for the semi-finals it is eternal versus sinners and i don't know if y'all remember yesterday we had a similar scenario where we saw the singularity on the dead dog saloon and it was an absolute banger of a set i love the skill expression from this killer and I love seeing survivors tackle this killer. Almost getting a tag onto that survivor. Looking around, Boone already dropped. We are off to the races once again. Getting the tag this time on the back of Nia. Immediately dropping that. Looking elsewhere. Singularity, I think, has to be one of my favorite killers in recent history. It is just such a sweet design for a killer. Beautiful position on the top of that cactus for that biopod. Trying to get a slipstream going on, but not going to happen. So I'm just going to break the pallet and move along. Doubling back around the cactus, trying to delay this hit as much as possible. And they do get the M1 immediately teleporting in afterwards. Worth noting, we didn't see a Corrupt Intervention, and I have yet to see a Hex Totem. So, once again, a very different build. Swinging through and getting the first down. Going for an immediate hook. The Survivor first gen going down behind the killer. Getting a Slipstream Biopod on the back of the Survivor. They're going to continue committing to it. Survivor says, I don't care. There comes the M1 as well. And this gen is almost 99, except... For the pop goes the weasel. Almost had to eat my words there because they were about to teleport. Singularity on phase, immediately getting another biopod. Survivors are doing a really good job cat and mousing these uh, these biopods in the back of their back. But unfortunately, the slipstream is just coming in too strong. Fangman coming in with... Ooh. Ow, I love that. So for those of you who didn't see what happened, they're able to do a quick swap between them and the disabled one to deny the cooldown on their teleport. And that is what happened there. They were able to get their teleport off quicker because they just switched to the disabled camera, resets the cooldown, and immediately swap back to the one that's enabled. For reference, I believe there's... I forget what the hotkey is by default, but I believe there is a hotkey that lets you immediately teleport back to the perspective of the previous camera. Anyway, we're getting in the weeds. Regardless, this Singularity is going haywire right now. Another Biopod getting cleansed with the EMP, but this will be a basement hook for our friend Ace. You say it. Oh my goodness, interrupting the reset with the Biopod? The angles this Singularity has access to are insane. And getting a teleport on the Kate. Seems like a sprint person is going to get them away, though. And Sarvis might be heading towards the basement for this unhook. Keeping an eye on angles. That's what I'm saying. This killer has such a magnificent skill expression. You've got the micro aspect of it, which is just... This is some insanely impressive micro play seeing constantly jumping between the cameras looking at the angles and line of sight and then also able to just do quick little teleports here and there but then you get the macro which is being shown as well where the killer is just constantly swapping between keeping an eye on where they are this killer essentially has 24 7 vision and understanding about where every single survivor is Ooh, but blocking... No, they didn't! They crawled underneath the Singularity and was able to get under for the... For the people. Not able to get a slipstream on that survivor's back. 
and they are going to abandon the chase with Ace. Trying to get that teleport prompt in. There you go. And off to the corner, Nia goes. Nia's saying, that is fine. I will take this corner hook. Checking around in the corner. Oh my goodness. Seeing something. Oh, they're saboing the hook. This is something that I was wondering if we would ever see. Saboing is legal, and there they go, using it for their advantage. Saboing the corner hook, making sure the survivor can't be hurt. Coming back for the survivor in the corner. Will they do the sabo once more? Gene integrity, 78%. Someone did run back down here briefly thinking about it, but I don't think they're going to commit to it. Just denying a little bit of time. There is a boon upstairs. I imagine it is a circle of healing. Possibly an exponential. So Pop goes Weasel for the killer. Immediately trying to get a slipstream on the back, but not going to work. Seeing a little bit of information where the survivor is and heading towards it. The sheer macro this killer is able to achieve between looking through their cameras is incredible. Checking around the backside of the dead zone and nothing to be found instead just going to apply a dry kick and move along. Getting a camera on top of the cactus. You know, I imagine... The biopod doesn't feel too comfy on top of that cactus, but I think it's, uh, in the end, maybe, uh, doesn't care too much. Interrupting this generator a little bit, but Ace is now in hot pursuit. Survivors have completely reset the killer's pressure thus far. Gens are above 50% in a lot of places now. Once again, getting those slipstreams going. Camera about to come back offline, but I don't know if it's in time or not. Oh, I think they were trying to do the, the quick tech, but not going to allow for it. This generator almost ready to fire as we speak. And it looks like the killer is actually interested in coming back and stopping this gen from firing too quickly. These are less open gens than I remember yesterday. Yesterday, there were more open gens, less in the dead zone, but more just overall in the map. And this one has a bit more closed off gens, so the Singularity is having a little bit more work put out for them. Checking on the gen that was almost finished. Ooh, it seems like someone did disable that biopod. Another slipstream coming in on the Fangmen. We did see a pile pod get disabled, but I think the Singularity is not able to really, you know, be concerned with it at the moment. They've got bigger fish to fry, and there's that gen that they just kicked. Whole lot of pressure coming in for this killer. Getting a hit through the window. We do see that hay status effect. And we have been hearing those stacks being accumulated might just be a play with your food which i mean to be fair if anyone paid attention to yesterday's match this is looking to be the exact same identical build as yesterday in a lot of cases and guys i do love the play with your food pick just a whole lot of extra speed Ace taking a hit, and that will be a pop goes the weasel coming in. Nia is death hook, so they do need to be a little bit careful here. Getting the teleport, going back into the corner, saying, that's right, we're going to do it again. We're going to sabo that hook. Ah! Singularly looking around, expecting that sabo, but not coming in just yet. Maybe just trying to waste some time, and yeah, there's the sabo, but... Oh, if it is just the saboteur perk, then there's still this they have access to. Hit tanks coming in. But I don't know if this survivor is aware. There is Agi in play. Doesn't matter if you take a hit. This killer does not care. 
Looking around for the slipstream. They get the slipstream. Almost getting the teleport around the edge. Barely out of range there. It's absolutely crazy macro coming from this killer. And in all fairness, crazy efficient plays coming out from the survivors as well. Tackling this in a really good style. But Fang getting caught out. They did get the biopod away, but... Now it's our slug, but oh, immediately getting the unhook. Looking around at their generators. Nothing too out of sorts with them just at the moment. I do believe this is actually Fang's first hook. It will be basement hook at that. Yeah, that is her first hook. Generator by Water Tower does finish. Currently three gens completed for the survivors. Taking a look around back. Just super wide angle views here. Able to see anyone that crosses their path. Getting another slipstream going on another survivor. Just impressive amounts of macro coming in. like they did disable the far saloon side one getting the biopod reapplied survivor still is in basement it looks like killer deciding and they've had enough of this boon and there was someone up here though they did seem to leave just now checking around the backside Ooh, just not quite high enough but they do get the teleport around the, the edge Vault coming in. Singular immediately vaulting after them. No life coming in, so that will be an M1 at the window. Noise notification coming in from the gen in the corner. It looks like that might even be Colibrian, which again is the same perk was being used before. Immediately getting another slipstream applied. Trying to see if they can get the cooldown, but not going to work. Ace now running away. No EMP in hand. And this survivor, I believe, is Death Hook. Getting another slipstream teleport. That jet is really close to being completed, but taking an M1. And Killer will go back to the Gen 2, keep it regressing. Again, just the macro play from this killer coming in to show another slipstream on the back of Ace. Looking around to see if they can get anything else, keeping their map awareness up. They do have the three gen. Not as not as powerful of a three gen as I've seen, seen before back there, but it is still a three gen nonetheless. But even then, you're able to, because this, normally this saloon gen is free for survivors, but because you can constantly keep tabs on it, it has not been so free for them. I think they're also very much aware of the three gen that they have to tackle. And once again, Going to the corner. Singularity says, fine. I think they might have even predicted this corner play coming in as they seem to have the means for countering it. Sabo coming in as expected, but Singularity has other hooks in sight, and there is that Agi coming in. No body blocks able, and that is a very dead Ace Visconti. Slipstream coming in. So I was trying to make use of their sacrifice, but I don't think they have. Someone was over here, but it's about to be another pop goes the weasel. Biopod getting disabled. Singularity setting up additional biopods to have more control of this area. And now, when a 3v1 scenario, I'll be honest, folks, I don't know how you get these gens done. The sheer macro power of Singularity is... I don't know if there is a killer that exudes this much map pressure without having a raw overpower chase power. And I think their power, their chase power is strong, but it's nothing, you know, nurse blights here. It's just a strong chase power.
but this killer's macro is insane. Going for the teleport once again. I think they're going for hit and run tactics now, which are totally available to them. Now, Entity saying, all right, I've had enough of your shenanigans. You can only do that so many more times. There is the gen... Uh, sorry, gen regression mechanic coming in. Kate taking chase. Sprint burst getting them a little bit of distance here. Vaulting back over, but... Survivor calling it and seeing it at the corner. Another slipster coming in on Fangmin. And immediately getting disabled. The rotations coming in hot. But Fang will take a hit regardless. And now the problem is... You, you have the issue, where do you hide to reset from this killer? There's no place to hide. Jeez. Especially, you know, you don't want to, you know, heal and shack. Even the singular they can't see there, they're going to check by there. Just such impressive displays of macro. Trying to double up, but the 7% coming in. And I think with that, folks, we are going to be looking at the 4K2 for Eternal Singularity. Looking around, they do get a reset on Nia. Could have also been Nia doing that. I, I think they actually have a medkit, so it could have been themselves. Teleporting over, just taking a quick check, and then immediately checking their gens once again. Nia coming nowhere close. Kate not able to get the unhook, as I think the survivor did give up on hook there. So now the question is, is there any kind of... Uh, no, there, no, there's not. There's no escape for these survivors. They have the exit gates all figured out. They have the exit gates on lockdown. Hatch will spawn at Shack, And I think this is a very... This is looking to be a very cut and dry 4K2. Survivors did a phenomenal job just keeping the pressure off a little bit. They were all injured at one point with two with Biopods. And then after a little bit of time, able to finally pull that back around. Singularity setting up for the end game in case they do try to go for the exit gate. But I do not think that's going to be the case. Trying to get a shot through the saloon, but not able to quite land it. Getting a teleport on Nia. Not going. Ooh, and even getting a EMP. A little bit of friendly bags as uh, lights hadn't quite worn that. They're welcome yet. Nia yeah, going to the corner. Fang setting back up. To I'm sorry, not Fang. Kate setting back up top on the generator. Get the biopod. It looks like they will teleport. And I think it's safe to say that this is... This is the lights out for the survivors. Ooh, getting a tag up on the top gen. They want that gen, I think, but I don't think there's any way for them to get it at the moment. There's the gen close. Nia in sight. And that will be the end of the line for these survivors. Singularity very happy with how this went. Again, just incredibly strong singularity play on the Dead Dog Saloon here. And with a 4K2... I'm not I'm not counting out Sinner's Killer, but it's a hard ask for singularity to do this. And singularity pulled out a very lovely win for themselves. Taking a little bit of a selfie cam as they watch the survivor go into the sky. And now, All right, everyone. Welcome back to Champions of the Fog. We are loading in for trial number two. And they did, in fact, crack out the Singularity.
They did have object to the Cenobite, but I haven't seen anyone pick the Cenobite for this set. But that's okay. I like Singularity. So now we have We Jason for Sinners coming out against the Eternal Survivor Team. Looking for their first victims and not finding anyone just yet. Interestingly, ooh, this survivor spotted a totem. The Singularity is able to chase them away from said totem, but for how long? Immediately getting the slipstream on Ada. Getting slipstream on Ace as well. And somebody going into the shack at the moment. We see Ruin in play. Ruin is regressing that gen at as we speak. Immediately dropping this pallet. Unless they will be able to get into Shaq. Seems they're already going to go for a quick destruction of the door here. And already that biopod has been cleansed with the EMP. Killer looking around. They do have access to a gnarly 3 gen. But again, the win condition here... Is essentially 4k3, 4k2 to tie, 4k1 is a loss. So survivors, all they have to do is get four gens done. Again, we say all they have to do. They only have to do four gens. You have to do four gens against the killer who is very, very mobile, very map aware, and also has a pretty baller chase power. Not able to get the stun there. Said going for the quick kick break. EMP being used immediately to get rid of that slipstream. Killer running around the edge. And they will have access to the bandwagon. Not using the pallet, just holding W through it, going to the back. Looping around another cart and an exit gate. Swinging through, but no vault here. And I think they're going to be taking a tag momentarily. And immediately turning back into the center, going towards main building. Not going to use their power to try and get a slipstream. Instead, just chasing into main building proper. Going for the break on this door. Looking around, looks like they did go up top. No progress on the saloon gen, though. Two gens firing back to back. I'm not gonna lie, so a little bit of a side note. The way the Singularity keeps popping their gun up is very reminiscent to me of how in the old school days of StarCraft, you would uh, click extra on the map just to, uh, it, it was like an idle fidgeting thing for, uh, for actions per minute. Anyway, just a side note. But Singularity getting the fake on the vault. Ada saying, bring it on, homie. We'll take that. And only one more gen to go. They did break a totem, and it looks like it was Haunted Grounds. There is a boon here as well. Waiting for the prompt to come up as uh, there is a fatigue when you look around right next to the hook. Killer looking around, only about 30 seconds left of Haunted Ground available to them. Checking the locker, looking around. Expecting to have seen a survivor nearby, but nothing in view. Singularity smells that someone is here, but it doesn't seem like anybody is in this location. More biopods getting detonated with the EMP. Ruin is still up, however. Slipstream has been applied. Teleport coming in, but Ace has the distance. Reapplying. And there is someone back here. It will get a tag on them, but Jake already has an EMP in hand. And will immediately detonate that slipstream. Vaulting over the top and getting an M1. But they will be able to get distance. Another totem going down. And since Ruin is still active, I think they just cleansed Blood Favor. Now there's Slipstream applied to Jake. Server's one gen away from tying this currently. They 
do get some on Jake once again. Looking around, seeing the survivor. They do get a teleport. Jake in a little bit of trouble here, potentially. Vaulting back over the top, though. There's the teleport, but Jake now being zoned out a little bit. They are looking to be in a dire situation. Not quite going to corner just yet. This will be first hook coming in for Jake. Third gen going down for the survivors in the corner this time. Saloon gen now having a bit of progress as we hear Ruin activate on it. Killer needs to be incredibly aggressive here. I say that's not how that works. You've got to wait a little bit. Unfortunately, the timer for Slipstream is a bit delayed on the unhook. Jake doing a really good job with these mind games. Slipstream coming in. Getting the teleport as well. Going for the tunnel out here. Nobody coming in for a for the people just yet. Is there going to be a flashlight save or a head-on? No, it is a decisive strike. And an immediate EMP coming in at the same moment to get rid of that slipstream. Singularity making quick work of that, though, and getting another tag. Another tag coming in. There's the teleport. We see some fibers on the gen nearby. They do get the tag over the top. But we hear two gens being worked on simultaneously. Chasing survivors off, reapplying biopods. As I getting getting some of these facilities to have a biopod is actually quite difficult. I will give that. The it, the, the the hitbox is a bit temperamental for where it applies a biopod. Second up coming in for Jake, but the kill has to be careful. This entire time survivors have been jamming gens. Dropping a pallet in the back. Killer aware of their position, getting a slipstream. But at this moment, they're they're keeping tabs. But yeah, but I say there's the fourth generator finishing. And an immediate unhook as soon as the teleport occurs from the ace. Eternal will be taking the W here in set number one, getting that fourth generator completed. And they're even working on a fifth one. Survivors want outs. They are not content with a win condition. They want to establish dominance in this set. Bolting back over the top, Ada taking a hit. And I imagine they're all going to the regroup location. Getting close to a slipstream, but Claudette not allowing it. Ooh, they do find a reset location. Getting a slipstream type, but there is a EMP in the wing. Trying to get a quick teleport, but not going to happen. And immediately... That slipstream gets cleansed, applying the EMP to J or sorry, slipstream to Jake. Ace is alone back here. Slipstream coming in. There comes the pallet break, and this ace is probably very dead, but they also have a survivor working on the gents at the moment. An immediate 99 sprint burst. Jake here to take hits if necessary. And I think no adrenaline here that we can see, but. The gens have been completed. Survivors will be working on exit gates momentarily. Two survivors slipstreamed. But survivors are looking at outs here. Firecracker going down. But it's not going to stop this. And this will be... I, is this Ace's first hook? I think it very well might be Ace's first hook. And I think survivors would be more than glad to give the survivor up for the win in this set. That means there could potentially still be a deliverance on the table. Deliverance to the hatch. Servers have opened the exit gate. And will they take their leave of absence just yet or not? I don't think they are. What is their plan? They're coming back in for the save! Ada getting a slipstream. There's the deliverance from Ace! 
they didn't want to give them the hatch like I had thought. Oh my goodness, that body block was nearly perfectly aligned. And with that, I think the survivors are content to take their leave. They wanted to try something, almost got it. That that window vault from Claudette was get down Mr. President level vibes. Deliverance has been played. Survivors still at the exit gate, getting their EMP, and I think that will be their three friends leaving the game. Body blocking the Claudette, some toxic behavior. Please report the Jake when you get to your loading screen. That is toxic behavior. With that said, that will be set number one going in favor of Eternal. All right, everyone, welcome back to Champions of the Fog. We are loading in for set number two. It is once again Sinners Killing with the Huntress on the Wreckers Yard. We've seen a couple of Wreckers Yards games with Huntress, and I imagine this one will be a little on the spicy side. We do see that beautiful corrupt in the crow jumping, not seeing a survivor peek their head out there. Either Huntress didn't notice or they don't think a survivor was there. So I was hiding out really, really well already. Taking a quick shot there. They do have the double wind-up speed add-ons. First gen already going down. Sorry, first... First hex totem. And so it looks like... Whatever that was is no longer to be... Getting a pallet stun at the tractor and then leaving promptly. Not wanting to be anywhere near the side of the Huntress. That is one thing I do like about Huntress, having this small little quality of life, having two extra hatchets. The reload requirements, not as necessary, which is pretty sweet. You can afford to take a couple of chases and not, you know, worry too much about it. Looks like... Thought it was hiding out there. Ada being found. Now pre-dropping this pallet. Running around the long side of the tile. Oh, it's such a close shot. It's not going to connect. Ada able to get away. Get some distance. And it looks like Huntress is dropping. No, they are committing to Ada. Ooh, throwing the hatchet into the pallet. Ada getting light for extra distance. And they do get a tag in the back. Ace is here, though. And it looks like they'll be taking chase with them instead. Spirit Burst coming in. Getting them around the corner just in time. And this Huntress is probably going to have to reload momentarily. And they'll continue on. Not seeing a reload just yet. Huntress. Very committed here. Oh, but the final hatchet missing. And Huntress will have to reload. A staying here. Very happy with his tile, seemingly. A saying, fine. I'll go down into this pallet. Is it a bluff? It is not. There is a wild Claudette barely getting there in time. With the background player as the first gen completes in the Huntress's face. Seems like they are content to actually continue chasing after the ace. Using the tree to dodge and they get it. Huntress gonna have to play this rock normally. Second gen going down for the survivors, and it looks like Killer is going to corner. And that will be first hook for the Hunters coming in at two gens completed. Survivors are resetting. Hunters going for a very, very aggressive hook. Okay, never mind. I thought they were looking for the one in the distance. That is not the case. 
And that is, in fact, a pain resonance. It does make sense why they were prioritizing that hook. I'm just heading towards the opposite side of the map looking for anybody. Not seeing too much. And they do spot an Ada in the distance, though. Catch it ready, but Ada doubling back and avoiding it. Ooh, taking a very gutsy bet there and losing, going in front of the window and getting a double tag on Ada here. That's going to be first hook for Ada, second hook for the Huntress. Another pain res coming in just as Claudette lets go. And she will continue working on the gen. Her gen now having 50% regression lost in front of her face. Looks like Survivor with blood in the area, but trail going cold and Huntress not wanting to find out where it goes. Checking the TNL back here. We see a reset on Ace. Oh, but we hear them. The small grunt of vaulting a window. Ace trapped back here at the... Ooh, the tractor is... There's the... Oh, wiggling, but not going to be enough. And that will be second hook coming in for Ace. Over Claudette is able to finish her gen after 50% being removed from it. Going for... Oh, man. This survivor went down under a pallet. I would have been so scared for flip-flop power struggle, but no. Second hook in the basement. I think we can rest assured that Ace in a dire situation. Especially with double wind-up bat-ons. Huntress looking around saying, you can't have him. He's mine, and wild. Taking a hit. Huntress very okay with that. Maybe even trying just to draw the Huntress's uh, attention away just long enough. There is still the central shack generator available to defend. That's going to be... Survivors might be in a little bit of a pickle here. There's Ada. Ooh just overestimating a little bit. Question is, does Clyde go down for the unhook? They will. No, they're not. They said, no, it's not enough time. That might have also been a reassurance play potentially, but getting a double tap on Claudette around the corner. Those double wind-up add-ons coming into play with that new buff that uh, Huntress got. And it does look like Ace's timer has officially paused. Interesting, I couldn't actually switch to the left for a second there. But yeah, Ace's timer is paused. Ada almost done with a generator. Claudette crawling away for their life. Ivan, the Renato is injured from the tag earlier. And this might spell a disaster. They finish the gen. Go check in that corner. I don't think the Huntress realizes how close they are to Renato. And that will be... Death hook for Ace. Renato being chased around the tractor now. No pallet left. Forcing Ada to go get the pickup on Claudette. Ooh, good mind games from Renato. Firecrackers coming down. Renato's saying, fine, you can have me, but only because I said so. And that'll be first still coming in for Renato. Reset has been achieved, and there's actually a lot of progress on this generator, but it does take a pain resonance. Claudette nearby wanting to finish it. Ada going for the main generator. Huntress clearing out some resources and going back on the prowl. Not seeing anybody over there, even though we know that Claudette is just beyond those rocks. Survivor is doing a really good job keeping the line of sight to themselves. Now the question is, do they have Delhi in the pocket or not? Did one of those survivors save it? Or was the survivor that was first hooked the Delhi player and that's why they wanted to protect them? We will have to wait and see. Looks like a fast fault through the window of Shaq. Huntress wanting to secure second stage here. There is good line of sight towards this hook. 
Wind of all coming in once again. Making sure they at this moment you do not want to take an unintentional tag. Be not very uh not very great. There is the deliverance though, as Claudette runs away, taking the Huntress's attention with her. Trying to get the quick wind up shot, but not able to connect. Just barely a couple frames too late. Claudette then taking a tag. Trying to go for a double tap. Oh, even with that quick wind up, not quite able to lob it there. Trying to get a quick shot into the main building, but it's not going to connect. Ooh, Huntress smelling blood back here at the rock. Claudette now zoned. Walking around behind, getting a little bit more time wasted. And they will end up going down around these rocks, but will be enough time bought for their survivor team. Getting the tag, but I think that's a failed skill check. I can't tell for sure. I think it was a failed skill check. Oh, that's going to be so costly. They're not going to be able to finish this generator in time. Ada coming around to set up for the unhook. There is the final pain res of the game. And Huntress, at this current moment, staring down a potential 4K1 with the pressure they've managed to keep going. There's the reload, and immediate response is an unhook on Glaudet. Ada still not to be seen. Blood going to the Huntress's left, but not caring. It goes to the right, actually. They read that situation very well, pre-dropping this pallet. And the question is, do you commit to any of these? I think you need to go find Renato. And Renato dropping the pallet as they leave. Or just vaulting it. Survivors need to do a reset here to get anything back, but that means this gen is going to start regressing once again. Spotting the Renato, getting a tag beautifully right at the top of that hitbox. And that'll be second hit. Hook coming in for Renato. Going to take a quick hook and go right back to the main gen. Survivors seem to have split up, though. Not interested in doubling up main gen. Instead, splitting out. That is smart. However, Claudette is still injured at the moment. And I think the Claudette sees that as well. Huntress going to kick the gen, regressing it by 5%. And then going back. I imagine survivors will be going for the unhook momentarily. Yep, there's the unhook. Huntress. Nowhere to really be seen. Instead, no, they're more interested. They know the Claudette has to be back here. And that'll be second hook coming in for Claudette. Huntress, two survivors now going to be on death hook. Taking them way further into the middle of the map so they have better line of sight on everything. Oh, and I think we just saw a crow fly up. Huntress not interested. Trying to get a quick shot on Ada, but is able to prevent her from coming in for the unhook. Oh, but they interrupted perfectly any longer, and they would have finished the animation and just taken a hit. But instead, the quick pick is not available to them. And now... Renato, the only one that's not in chase. The pressure is on. It is looking to be a 4K1 potentially, unless Ada has a chase of the light. But there's no resources back here. Ada going to die in the corner. <laughs> this loop is very long. Ada is looping this perfectly. Wasting as much time as possible. And Huntress, realizing that, immediately heads back to the shack where Renato was working on the generator, but is slowly s slinking back into the back of the map. Taking the time hiding. This survivor is dead. They are a prime target more so than Ada. But I do believe Huntress not interested going back and they do find Claudette coming in to try and reset the Ada. Taking a tag to the back. And now they're on the ground. Huntress will go for the pickup here. Renato desperately working on the generator. Will they build? No, that is almost not even 50%. They are going to try, but that is not going to be enough.
Oh my goodness, that was so close. Renato using the tree to their advantage, dodging back, and they are able to avoid it, but going right back after the Ada now. And that will be Ada back on the ground. Looking back for Renato now. I think the 4k at this point is all but assured. Hunter's doing a really good job keeping the pressure on. Ooh, Renato doing a good job with the dodge. And they do go down after the pallet has dropped. And that will be the 4k1 secured for Wee Jason and Sinners. And now it is going to be up to Eternal's own killer to see what they can do in the face of this. But regardless, a well-played game indeed. And it looks like Survivor is crawling to the basement. I'm just going to go ahead and just do a quick hatch check. And that will be all they wrote for trial number three. Again, very curious to see what they're going to bring in the face of this as it is not required that you bring Huntress. But I would say Huntress is a pretty dang good pick on the Wrecker's Yard. And with that said, we're going into trial number four very shortly here. Use this moment to remind everyone that uh, Rogue keeps me going during these long days of casting. All right, everyone, welcome back to Champions of the Fog. And it looks like they did, in fact, bring out the Death Slinger this time. And I'm not going to lie, I'm happy to see Death Slinger, not just because I love some of the insane, crazy, off the wall shots that these killers use. But also just the fact that this killer has blessed frames. No screen tearing today on the Death Slinger. And I am excited. That said, we do see scratch marks going into the shack. Fangman getting caught out a little bit. And that will be an M1 right off the bat. Instantly, pre-dropping shack pallet. Not wanting to take any chances there with a potential cheeky hit. And now, Fang getting zoned a little bit, but not enough. Looks like Nia in the wing wanting to take some aggro here. There comes... Not able to get the blind. Nia taking attack around the edge. I was curious if they would either get pulled over the junk tile or if they would swing for it. But regardless, able to get the tag. Two survivors injured, one in deep wound. And it seems like two survivors over here on the gen otherwise. Fang getting reset. Ace taking a tag. Getting a little bit of distance. Trying to get back to the dump truck, but dodging back. Able to avoid the Redeemer's shot. And Ace will take a shot from the side. And this is a not Ace A tile against Destiny. That's what makes him so good in some of these tiles is just the ability to negate them entirely. And that will be first hook for the killer at five gens. This killer sprinting to another hook, which looks like it may be an agitation. No corruption play, by the way. And that is also a scourge hook pain resonance. Grim embrace to boot. This killer has a lot of perks that are going to do a lot of damage to these generators. Seeing a crow across the way, killer knows where at least one person is. And a pop goes the weasel as well. This killer is ready to slaughter some generators. See scratch marks coming in. Killer doesn't seem to mind too much. Seems like they're looking for other survivors at the moment. Or maybe they know the survivor didn't commit. Could also be the case. Yeah, it looks to be the case as they do find Nia over here. Now Nia in a bit of a precarious spot. Trying to take a really cheeky shot but not quite able to thread the loop there. Nia with Sprimper is getting a little bit of distance around the edge. 
Second stage confirmed. Very surprising. I think the survivors just want to get the gens done. They know what the win condition is. Gladly sacrificing a stage to ensure they get a couple more gens done. Again, whoever would go in for the hook trade here would be in a bit of a dire situation as another pain risk would be right around the corner. Add-ons in play are the quicker reload, the warden's keys, and the uh, I believe it's the ammo belt or the ammunition belt gives additional reload speed. Very, very good add-ons for the Deathslinger. Usually you would see Cigar, but since the rule set is only green add-ons and below, these are what is taken. See K coming in, possibly to distract. And I think it was a camaraderie play as that, that timer has paused. Wasting even more time from the killer. Second gen going down. There's a third one over here with a little bit of progress. Not a lot, though. Taking a shot, but missing. Sarah is not taking any risks here, and it looks like they are going to go in for that unhook. Managing to get the snag, but not in time as they are able to complete the unhook. Kate saying, I'm going to make you waste as much time on this chain as possible. Or taking a deep wound and going away. It looks like they will be hanging on, trying to get this ace out of the game. Ace running around in the bus tile, looking for a shot, but I've seen some nasty shots through that corner. Third gen going down. Survivors know what they have to do here. Getting the shot, not able to get it before the pallet drops. Is this indicative of a decisive strike potentially? No, no decisive strike for the ace, and that is a 3v1 at two gens remaining. Can the survivors get a gen done? Immediately going back to the gen over here where they knew the most progress was. We see a survivor running towards the dump truck. Gen does have a significant amount of progress. This is going to be a nice pop goes the weasel for the killer. And from now on out, this is the crazy part. They have three live pain res here as well as three additional uses of Grim Embrace, one of them being the final one. Looks like... Not wanting to commit to anything just yet, wanting to make sure that they get a good chase. Gen is still regressing. They can afford to let one more generator go for a tie, but I think they if, they, if they stop this right now, if they 4K with two gens up, it is a 2-0 sweep. Looking around the edge of the bus. Claude, I'm sorry, not, Fangman, oh, but missing the shot. I was say Fangman probably take a hit, but with that shot missed, probably not. They do get the shot regardless through the pallet. And that will be a tag onto the back of Fang. And they will take their hit and take their leave. Going back to the gen they had kicked prior. So I was already running. Looks well, that they want to give them a tag as well. Nancy can't tell if they ran this or started to stealth out. It's hard to say. Oh, it's Nia! Right, there's no Nancy in this game. Nia has a very similar outfit to Nancy. Taking the deep wound as well. Fang having mended already. Ooh, they know that mind game. And able to dodge. Killer committing still, despite the gen in the back. Must be very certain that it's not going to be finished. There comes the down. Is there a pain resonance nearby? Not in time, and that will be fourth generator complete. Fifth gen complete is a set win for sinners. As of right now, it is a tie set. Pain resonance popping off on a generator. It's not out of the realm of possibility that the survivors are able to pull a fifth gen out and force a set three with a one one. But as of right now, they would be going into set three with a tie. Or sorry, with a with a tie in set two, which means they have to outright win set three just to go into a tiebreaker.
Good patience from the survivor, but taking a shot over the pallet regardless. You have to think that Fang is going for a generator right now, right? You let the survivor sit on hook as long as you need and you get that generator done. But what gen do you work on? Looks like Destiny is saying the farthest gen. Not seeing any crows. But there is some progress, but it's still regressing for the last time it got hit. That's like you're going back and checking the side of the map. Unhook does occur before second stage. There is some progress, and they do find Fang Min running away from that generator. But remember, every single down that occurs now is going to result in a pain res. Fang does go down. That is going to be another pain res, and it's coming in most likely. It looks like they either want a pain res or a hook closer to that gen being worked on so they can keep track of it. That is another pain res. They see it hitting the gen in the back. They know they have no other gens to worry about at this moment. Grim Embrace coming in for another delay on the generators. Resets coming in for both Kate and Nia. Now looking around, not seeing anybody come for that unhook just yet. Again, I think this is a dire situation for the survivors. If they're able to pull out and get a fifth generator done so by some miracle. Oh my goodness, a beautiful shot on the Nia. Dragging them back towards the hook and taking a hit. And now Kate coming in for the unhook, trying to get it before a second stage. Reassurance coming in. But preventing it and they will go for a hook trade and they will take that hook trade saying that is a-okay by me instead just putting them back even further close to the gen this gen almost completely regressed and seemingly want to save that pain resonance for later as once again grim embrace activates now the full 40 second duration which means that survivor is going to sit on there for 40 seconds with the killer having nothing better to do. But, well, I say that. Killer's looking for the reset point. Killer doesn't want to play this passively. They want to play aggressively. They want to end this game now. There's the deliverance from Kate. Maybe why they wanted to save that pain res. And they do find the reset point. Fang coming in for an off-the-record hit. But regardless, Nia... In a world of hurt now. That'll be second hook coming in for Nia. Spangman goes back to the other side of the map. Killer does have some time to waste, but the question is, even with all this time wasted, walking back across the map for 20, 25 seconds, is it going to be enough? Was Kate on that generator from the get-go or not? Like, the only way I see that gen getting done is resilience, and if Fang was there doing the same thing, and they are not, they are in the wing getting mended, and that is another down. Does Kate go for the unhook here, or do they try working on the generator? I think they've been committing to the generator. The killer doesn't seem to think so. Ah, they must have spotted a crow or something because they do see Kate in the wing next to the fun bus. Trying to get a shot, but not able to make a connect. And as things are looking, I do believe Deathslinger is going to be able to pull out the 4K1 and tie set number two. Unless something absolutely crazy happens here. Okay, going to the back, but not able to get around the corner as they barely nail the shot. And that'll be second up coming in for Kate. And since Fangman is on the ground, I would imagine it is going to be nothing more than a 4K1 enforcing a set number three. But going in with a tie, 
set two is not a good look. Center is, is just to try and scrape by. It's going to have to force a set win three. Eternal only has to tie set two. Or sorry, set three. Curious if they might have brought Adrenaline. Adrenaline seemingly, oddly enough, in a lot of cases, going by the wayside in this rule set as other more powerful perks come into play or the earlier in the game. You don't need Adrenaline nearly as much. And with that kick, that will secure the 4k1 for the Death Slinger. Looks like Fang collecting crows over in the corner having a good time. And we'll be moving into set number three very shortly here, folks. Gotta say, some phenomenal shots from the Deathslinger. Survivors did a really good job getting that fourth generator done, though, as that was the breaking point they needed. All right, everyone, welcome back to Champions of the Fog. It is set number three. And we have Dan cranking out the hillbilly on the gas heaven. And I will say, I have not seen too many hillbilly matches since the rework. I am so excited. I can't deny it. Immediately looking for survivors, we see Nia. Billy threatening with that saw. But not gonna see it. Immediately coming around and getting a fantastic curve, but not able to connect. Looks like Nia was able to spin around them. Getting some crazy good saws, but Nia playing this super safe. In the pallet. And immediately breaking it. Nia vaulting. Will they double back? No, they're going to hold. And that might be a very dead. Ooh, getting a little bit of distance there. Beautiful curve around the locker. And that'll be first look coming in for the hillbilly. Looks like going for their first look. It is going to be a pain resonance. And, uh, do my eyes deceive me? A barbecue and chili. Immediately spiking survivor over here. Almost getting the curve. That was a crazy S curve through the main building. Firecracker coming in and getting the blind. Billy hot on their trail, but deciding to go back towards the hook. Sliding off the cars, but they do get there in time to see the unhook happen. Will they go for the tunnel out on Nia or commit to the unhook? Looks like not finding anything. They will go for the Nia instead. Heading towards main building. Said looking back, they want to see if they can get the survivor to commit out of here. Curious if they're calling out, hey, they're looking back your way or not. And Billy will move on towards the shack. Shaq with a decent amount of progress. So we're going around the long side. Doing the full curve and almost getting it. This is what I wanted to see. These crazy, sick, disgusting curves. Billy setting up. Not going to go for the S instead. Thinking they might double back around, but they do hold forward. Bangman getting zoned ever so slightly back into this tile. Overdrive kicking in. There's the side and no way for that survivor to dodge. One gen down. Second hook incoming. Is there enough time for a pain res or will the shack gen be finished by someone rotating over? It's like Nia working on it. Oh, but not quite in time and Nancy's going to have to leave. Looks like they are hot on a survivor's trail here. Looks like it is the Nia. Nia back in the same spot they were earlier. Killer not interested. Instead going back. Trying to get the curve around, but not quite able to land it on the ace. But ace in a whole lot of trouble as Overdrive kicks in. Fang taking the body block for ace. Not interested though. And ooh, but they are doubling back into them. 
They are happy to go for this tunnel here as the body block already occurred. Ooh, thinking they might cover up, but then instead holding W to the next pallet set. Fang going really deep into the back here. And yeah, that is a hit through the long wall. Second gen going on for the survivors. Second up coming in for the killer on the Fang. Barbecue giving a whole lot of information here. Huh. Surprised that it didn't actually like break the pallet. I've seen it happen before. Occasionally the hitboxes is a bit weird. Billy coming in for a pop goes the weasel on the generator. Looking around, seeing who is available, but immediately going back towards the unhook. It is Nancy, and it looks like they are not interested in Nancy saying, nah, this Fangman's made it clear who the target is. Sweet through the paladin. Fangman holding W for their life. Looks like it is going to be an off the record. Getting some extra distance. Here comes the long wall. Oh, barely hitting the corner. And I think if they had missed the corner, that actually would have been a connecting hit unless Fang flared. Siding against it. There's the break, pushing the back of the pallet. I'm sorry, the shack. Shack not where they want to leave though. Overdrive kicking in. And they get the grab. Nia watching on in horror as their teammate is about to be sent back to the campfire via the entity. Fourth generator firing on all cylinders. Is it going to pop? No. It is going to take a pop goes the weasel instead. And that is a 3v1 with two gens remaining. Killer now checking their gens, checking their sides. Seeing Ace over here, cutting them off from the shack loop, but they are able to get there if they so choose. Getting the cover around. Ooh, a beautiful flare, barely dodging the Billy Saw, but I think this spells the end for Ace. No! Ace dodging at the last possible second. Fourth generator going down. Ace barely sliding off the Billy here. And you have to be careful. You can't commit for too much longer now. Nia's back at the gen. They need to end this chase ASAP. Swinging around the side, barely blocking them in. Getting the Saw. Will the fifth generator fire in time or not? Billy doesn't care. They're going to take their pound of flesh here. Will it be a pain res? Will it be a pop? Will it be a grim embrace? It is a pain res! Saving this gen, but with barbecue seeing, there's nobody on that generator. Breaking the main building window and going after the Nancy. Very clutch pain res. Nancy in a bit of a predicament. There's no pallet here. There's the down. There's the deliverance from the ace. Oh, no. Is it going to be in time? Nia's on an entirely separate gen, though. Nancy coming in for their first hook. And a pain res on a separate generator. That means that the gens are really, really regressed now. Billy might be able to stabilize here at a 4v1. There's the Grim Embrace telling them exactly where Nia is. At the team now, Overdrive kicking in. Ooh, narrowly threading the tree, but still missing Nia regardless. Almost getting the curve. Nia playing this really precisely. Not going for the M1, but now this window is blocked off to them. Ace resetting Nancy in the meantime. Here comes Bloodlust 1 kicking in. And getting the saw on Nia. Looks like this will be second hook coming in. Will survivors be able to double up on any chance? We see a crow coming up. The killer notices it. Pain res and Grim Embrace are gone. Checking out the A's, deciding they want to go for them instead. They are injured. Is there? Oh, but is a 99 sprint burst? Flicking around at the last second, going back towards the Nancy's generator. But that gen was barely touched. It's still regressing. But now Nancy is being zoned back into the TNL. Ooh, trying to thread. I don't know how you thread this so fast. The pixels are just like so fast.
And now Survivor is being zoned away from this unhook. Killer holding this area on lockdown, not letting anyone get past them. Wanting to secure the stage on Nia, forcing the 2v1. And with that, probably a 4k1. Unless something absolutely crazy happens. Going for the cover on the side. No, they're going for the Nancy. Nancy's still not on that gen. I'm wondering if they're trying to save someone for a hatch play. Ooh, it looks like the hill gen was actually being worked on this whole time. Billy going to make quick work of that with a small kick. Ooh, the TNL Jedi's actually had a lot of progress in the meantime. However, Nancy holding their ground at the TNL. And they will take an M1. Dry kick coming in for the generator, and Billy will follow up towards the shack. Noticing this power did turn around in the middle. Checking the side. Ace not to be seen. Nancy stuck at the TNL once again. This time injured. Ooh, so close. I love that they're going for these curves. Not quite able to get it. The, the Nancy also knows about the curves. And that will be an M1... Survivor on the ground. Billy got to do one last check on the generators. Gens are still regressing. No sign of Ace to be seen. No reset. Billy seems to think they are. Breaking open a door. Going back towards Nancy, will they go for the hook or not? I would imagine, unless something absolutely crazy happens here, I think these exit gates, especially for a hillbilly, are entirely patrollable. Especially if a survivor's injured. You can see if there's going to be blood pooling if they try to 99 the exit, or the, you know, 24%. Oh, it doesn't even matter because barbecue is here to say that I haven't, I don't remember the last time I saw a barbecue get unironically used. But this game has been very powerful. Sprint burst coming in from Ace, but is it going to be enough? Curving just around the edge, but Ace able to dodge around the tires. Crouch tech not working. And that will be the 4K1 confirmed for Eternal's Killer. And now the question is, can Eternal's Survivor Squad get five gens done can they win set three or will set three also be like it, it, like ultimately the win con here is not out of the question a 4k one is tieable and again if it's a tie for set three eternal did win set one all right everyone welcome back to champions of the fog it is the final trial of the semis it is we jason cracking out the billy and once again they have to win this set. They have to kill everyone before four gens. Ooh, almost getting that curve, but not quite. If the fourth generator finishes, it will be a tie set. Which would mean Eternal would win because they took set number one. Ooh, a little bit of aura reading. Possibly an undying, I would think. Because I don't think that was an object. Feeling going around the edge. Ace hitting the long wall, going into the map, taking some pallets out of their way. And Ace now... Oh, I was about to say, you're almost zoned, but they do have access to the car L wall. Dropping the pallet. Feeling around the side with overdrive, zoning them a little bit. A's throwing every pallet from here to London, not wanting to get caught out. Ooh, Billy getting caught on the garbage bags. 
Firecracker coming in, but it's not going to be enough. Getting caught around the very edge, and that is an infectious fright. So everyone's screaming, letting the Billy know what's up, and that'll be first hook coming in. Able to push the survivor off the jet. There is, in fact, ruin in play as the jet has started regressing. First hook coming in. And it is also a pain resonance. 25% off the most progressed generator. And the survivors are already having their generators regress thanks to ruin. Survivor on the hill, getting a little bit of distance, ready to run away. Billy with overdrive going back towards the shack, going back towards the dump truck generator. Generator is regressing. No cleanse on the totems just yet. Going around the side, Ace almost getting caught in the corner, but will have a pallet to drop. Overdrive has ended. And Billy just going back to the hook. Looks like just in time to get a hit on Ada as the trade comes in. And that'll be another Pain Resonance coming in very shortly. And it looks like it might have been Ace. Even a skill check being failed at the same time. A monumental amount of progression loss. 35% in addition to Ruin. And that gen is back to nothing. Ace taking chase by what I call the fist tile. It looks like four fingers and a thumb over the top, so I call it the fist. Ada getting zoned back here. One gen going on for the survivors. That is one of four they need to complete. Crouch teching around the corner, but it's not going to be enough, and this survivor will be going down momentarily. Trying to get under the pallet. I think they do. However, there is nobody there to heed the call of the pallet, and that will be second hook for Ada coming in momentarily. Going immediately away over the top, trying to see if they can jump over this tile, but not quite enough height. Interesting that they're not prioritizing getting Ruin out of the way. I guess they just don't think it's worth it. Overdrive coming in. Ace on the Z-Wall, getting hit around the Z-Wall! Now the Billy has the pressure they're looking for. One slug on the ground away from the hook. One hook, 20, 40 seconds away to being progressed to death state. And that is Claudette being pushed off of the shack generator. Ruin regressing it as we speak. It looks like, I think the timer for the hook was paused briefly. I can't tell for sure. It might have been a camaraderie. Was it they're going all the way back over here for the pickup? Renato going down! This is the pressure that Billy was needing to force a tiebreaker. Claudette desperately coming in for the unhook on the Ada. But with survivors going down left and right, what can you do? Ada body blocking, trying to take as much pressure away from the survivors. But they only want Claudette. Claudette is going to go down with an M1 shortly. With Infectious Fright telling them where the, everybody is. Billy going to go intercept Ada now. And it is looking to be a 4K1 if this survivor goes down and gets hooked. There's the pickup. Ada trying desperately to body block. And Ace has the main building to work with, but I think the, the Billy is like, okay, I could greed. This girl probably has unbreakable. Hook them, then go find Ace. Ace can't hide for too long. And all this time, Ruin is regressing all of that hard work. Even if this is not a 4K1, I think this is too much damage to come back from. Coming around the side, they do find the scratch marks. Ace! Trying to get the pickup on Renato. Renato possibly in a scenario where they have... That's not going to matter what they have. That is Ace going down. Everyone is getting hooked. And this is looking to be the 4K one that sinners need to force a tiebreaker. Which, by the way, folks, a tiebreaker is going to result in a 1v1. Looking around, making sure, 
I'm about to say, technically there are Kobe's allowed, but I think Billy is just content to bask in the slaughter that they performed here. Just hanging out on hook, waiting for a second stage to confirm. I think the survivors are going to take the second stage here and just pass. As I'm pretty sure deliverance has already occurred. I don't think they have to worry about anything from there. Again, 4%ing is allowed, but I don't think... Even if there is a 4% here, what are you gaining? You've got survivors on the ground that are ready to be picked up, but you're not going to make it back there. Renato has collected a majority of crows. I think... They are under the assumption that this survivor has flip-flop power. It's entirely possible. They could have flip-flop power struggle. Trying to see if they could pick him up on the edge, but no. They are firmly underneath that pallet. The other survivor, however, crawling around the map currently. And I think they are content to let that survivor bleed out. And that is death stage confirmed. On ace. Renato still a lot of crows. I think they're just watching around looking for any sign of the other server that's bleeding out. Maybe thinking they bleed out first, get a hatch, but that does not seem to be the case. Ah, it looks like they were coming around a little bit closer to here, but that's not going to be enough. And I think, yeah, I think they're just going to be like, all right, we've waited four minutes. We can wait the additional couple seconds. And that will be 4K1 for the Hillbilly today, folks. An impressive showing for certain. So with that said, we will be back in just a moment as we wait for Claudette to bleed out on the ground. As we all do in our pub games. I mean, what? With that said, really well played to both these teams. Just... And we are off. But it running around alongside. I also just now recognized the Slipknot headpiece. And bless you. Bless you. Hanging around in the middle, going around long side. So we're doing a really good job of pathing here, finding the next location. Dropping the pallet. Here comes some check spots, I would imagine. Running around the long side, Bloodlust kicking in. Survivor not caring. They're going to take the M1, going into center. Just passing the minute mark now. Clyde doing a really good job. There's the window. Heading straight forward. They have a good time. They're not going to bother with it. They, they fear the bloodlust going around the side. Going to force the pallet drop. Staying at this loop. It is close. Trapper expecting the panic ball, but Clyde holding clear minded here. Running to the next pallet. Waiting, waiting. There's the pallet drop. And there is the down. With that said, we'll be off in just a moment waiting for that bag. There we go. We are off to the races. Immediately hugging around the water tower. It's going to be their first lap. Heading back in. It looks like it is a favorable side. Watching, looking, waiting, going around the edge. Not going back inside. And that will be a pallet drop. Passing 30 seconds now. One third of the way there to victory. And a pallet drop immediately. Holding, holding. Very, very strong play here. Not taking too many t chances and vaulting through, waiting for Bloodless to kick in. It is 50 seconds. Leaving the tile altogether and escape chase. Bloodlust is canceled out. 
And we're just passing the minimum. I think that is enough to get two hits within the next 30 seconds. It's going to be nearly impossible. Trying to mind game at Shaq, holding long wall and is not going to be enough. There's the vault. Eight more seconds, vaulting back into the killer. There's the M1. Three, two, one. And that will do it, folks. Eternals 1v1 has lasted long enough. Well played and congratulations to Ivan and GG. WP to Zub, both incredibly well played here, but in the end, the 1v1 has decided. And there it goes, just shy of two, ah, I, I clicked a bit late, but just shy of two minutes.